hosts of the Digital Health Live show. We are here in Santa Clara, California. Uh, excited to be back in California uh, with the Health Tech Capital event. And um, I was trying to be here yesterday, but my plane got delayed. But nonetheless, I'm really excited to uh, have a startup company in the medical space um, with Ian Shaquille. Shankill? Shaquille, like Shaquille. the basketball player. All right. He's a CEO and co-founder of Augmetics, great brand name. Yeah, we're still arguing about the name, but it's stuck for sure. Okay. <laughs> that happens. And then we have Dr. Nuremberg with the Palo Alto Medical Clinic. Medical Clinic. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. I'm a primary care physician with Palo Alto Medical Clinic. I'm also the primary care division head, so I uh, take care of a lot of different primary care departments. Okay, great. So we're just getting warmed up here. And um, so I was curious, Ian, what's your background and, and what was that spark in, your, in you and your team's mind when you, you, when you came up with your idea? Yeah, sure thing. My background is mostly in healthcare and medical devices. And um, yeah, I've been in this space for about four years. And just being in healthcare, we've come to learn the many pain points in the lives of doctors. Um, a lot of those pain points have to do with, you know, spending so much time on the computer, on the, on the record keeping systems, and so little time, you know, yeah. able to focus on the patient. So when we had the opportunity to try on one of the very early versions of Glass, me and my co-founder knew immediately this, this did not really belong first and foremost to consumer, but it had applications in enterprise and specifically in healthcare to meet those pain points. And so we dropped everything we were doing. Um, I, you know, I, I left my job, which I had just started, and my co-founder, Pelu, left medical school early to found the first glass company, and that is Augmetics. So it's the first glass company. Yep. And um, what was the old model, and how are you changing that model and reducing the cognitive load and the time drain on doctors to help make a more efficient, uh, I guess, medical record? I mean, you should ask Dr. Now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I guess, uh, first of all, just outlining the burning platform that Ian started to talk about yeah. is that in the last you know, 10 to 15 years, the work of physicians has changed dramatically with the uh, introduction of the electronic health record. So whereas before, um, doctors made jot quick notes and they didn't have uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, patient portals where patients were emailing them 20 emails a day, yeah. but the workload has just increased dramatically. and. Consequently, physicians have been burning out. So what they've yeah. been doing is they've just been cutting back the amount of time that they're seeing patients. And we really, that was sort of the burning platform. So what Augmetics offered us was an opportunity to take a big chunk of that workload, that medical documentation, and offload it onto someone else so that we could spend our time doing actual doctoring work, like yeah. diagnosing patients, hearing patients what their, their concerns are and addressing those, and not spending so much time on our own after the visit, just typing in Right, what, what we heard. And then there's also can be associated when somebody's burnt out, there's error, could be, I guess, not, not as efficient way of... Absolutely, I mean, you don't want to have a burned out physician, right? You want someone who is engaged in your, in your healthcare. And I'm not saying that doctors are burned out, but the way they, they prevented that was just cutting back the time. Yeah. And we really want patient, or physicians to be there to see their patients. We don't want them not, yeah. not available, right? So, are they, so um, then how did you guys connect up and what was the goal of, uh, I guess you guys are doing testing right now or basically bring it to... Yeah, so, um, you know, we're both uh, based here in the Bay Area and in, in Silicon Valley, and it was really great timing. Uh, I mean, right now, the EHR burden uh, that Dr. Naumberg spoke of, spoke of is just really felt as being very acute um, across doctors all over the all over the nation and and Sutter and Palo Alto Medical Foundation were specifically looking for solutions and innovations to address that problem and just just around the time when we were introducing and starting our pilots so we were synced up very early on uh, we thought we, we should initiate an, uh, a bold early stage pilot and so far the pilot's been very successful and we're now working towards larger uh, expansion across the enterprise at Sutter and Palo Alto Medical Foundation so Teresa, paint a picture of like the old way of doing um, this data capture and then how, how you do it now. And it, what was interesting is it's also a high touch uh, a method and it's not just a black box computer in the back running some crazy algorithms. It's a, it's a more human process. Yeah. 
So I think w um, what you have to think about is what we used to do previously to try and keep our heads above water of a physician seeing that maybe 20 patients in a day, you can't leave all your documentation till the end of the day because you'll be thinking, you know, what did that patient tell me? I didn't remember the details up late at night. So previously physicians, a lot of physicians would either do it late at night and maybe not quite remember everything or it may not be as accurate um, or more likely with it when the patient's in the room. So I think you've probably had that experience where you've gone to see your doctor and they kind of turn away from you for a few seconds and try and quickly enter a few keystrokes and try at the same time to multitask and hear what you're saying, but at the same time trying to enter all this information into the medical record. Now when I go in the room, that responsibility is someone else's for the time being, and I just focus on you. I listen to what you're saying in my mind, in the background, instead of thinking I gotta enter that into the computer, I'm thinking like, oh, he's having abdominal pain. It could be, is it, where in the abdomen is it? And then once I get there, you know, asking the right questions and moving on down my differential diagnosis. So I, I feel like the focus is much better uh, on the patients right now. So that, I think that's the big... Uh, that's a big deal, so they actually feel comfortable and paid attention to you in the space where the, everyone's time is diminished down to Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think w when we started this pilot, we were just hoping that patients would accept it. We weren't surprised that patients really embraced it because they're not deciding, deciding between my physician with their full attention on me without glass on their head or with glass on their head. They're deciding between my physician dividing their attention between this electronic health record and me or now my physician's more intently concentrating on what I'm telling them. Is there richer data captured through the device so you could walk through this as video, audio, what's the difference? I think the, one of the nicest things when you talk about the richer capture is you have a third party listening in. Okay, yeah. Sometimes physicians hear what they want to hear, and there's been times that I've read through the note and said, yeah, the patient really did say that, and I might even call the patient back and say... Also, the patient's there, and it's real time. It's real time. They're hearing what the patient's saying, and so sometimes you're, you kind of lock in on your diagnosis, and you might be thinking, you know, that what the patient's saying, you may be seeing it through that lens, and sometimes it's nice to hear again, well, well, no, the patient really did say X, Y, or Z. So I think that's where it's really, it was another interesting finding from, from uh, using this technology. Okay, so you're speaking at the event today. What, what, what's the, uh, what are you rolling out today or what, what's the conversation? Yeah, there's no major announcement today, but we're really here to just, uh, you know, let the world know that, you know, Augmetics is uh, doing well, is successful. Um, We've had a wonderful showcase partner that is Sutter Palo Alto Medical Foundation. We want the world to know about the success and about our general availability and the fact that we're here to help doctors all over the country with their biggest pain point, that is the EHR burden. Yeah, that's a big, uh, it's been in the news, it's, it's one of the biggest things. Uh, as a startup and as you guys are going through this, what kind of ask do you have for everybody out there who could help you out? Are you looking for more support? Are you looking for more trials? What's the technical partners? Yeah, I mean, for us, uh, you know, we're, we're in scaling and growth mode. So health systems and doctors that are in need for solutions to this problem, contact us. We're ready to pilot to expand with you. Um, and just as a, as a growing company, we're also looking to hire across the board in almost every department and function you might imagine. So definitely visit augmetics.com and, and find out how you can be part of our team. Okay, now and I have an interesting question for Teresa. So I work with uh, the CS Digital Health Center. We see all these new technologies kind of come out. They're hot, then they disappear, then they come back. And we're kind of this new phase of telepresence, telemedicine, augmented, virtual reality. What is, what's the next five years look uh, from your standpoint? I think we're, you know, certainly speaking from primary care, we're going to really have to redesign how we do primary care. I think we're going to see a lot more in uh, video medicine, uh, telemedicine type. Uh, we're going to see a lot more care teams. I think there's a lot of changes that are going to be coming in the next five years. As I don't think there's, there's a lot of opportunity in healthcare in terms of making it more efficient, making it more cost effective, really leveraging the physician. And I think we're just seeing the beginning of that. And the idea is to let talk technology enable things, but not disintermediate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think, you know, again, people, it has to be a benefit for the patient. Okay. I think so either more convenient for the patient, uh, more engaging for the physician and the patient, but I really do think that we have to keep patients at the center and find technologies that work with their current lifestyles. Very good. You've done TV before, haven't you? No. <laughs> okay, good. And uh, how do people get a hold of you? Um, I'm at Palo Alto Medical Clinic. Okay. So um, 
I think probably the best way, uh, well. Um, you can reach out to, it, maybe you, through you, yeah. the best The best way to re reach out to either uh, Palo Alto Medif Medical Foundation or Augmetics re regarding this is info at augmetics.com. So, uh, well, that wraps it up here today. Uh, first interview. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for the conference producers at Health Tech Conference for uh, allowing me to set up stage here. Cheers. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks to the producers also for setting this up. <laughs>